Hi guys, it's Hessel. Um, I just wanted to make you a quick summary video going over the rules for series circuits. If you're still confused or whatever, um, maybe this will help. Uh, first of all, um, from the get-go, Ohm's Law, R equals V over I. Um, that's the way it is on page four of the reference table. Also, I equals V over R and V equals I R. Those are the other ways you can write it. That is still true. That is still a thing. R and I are inversely proportional. Proportional. And which means that as resistance goes up, then that current goes down. Uh, voltage or potential difference and current are directly proportional and uh, which means that as your potential difference increases then your current also increases and then uh, resistance and voltage are also directly proportional. And you can see that in the equation up here at the top um, between R and V. Um, but uh, that also makes sense because if you want your current, if you want your flow to be constant and you don't want your flow to change and the uh, resistance increases, that would normally bring the flow down, but if your resistance increases and you push harder, then your flow can stay constant. Um, and uh, so yeah, resistance and voltage are directly proportional. Now bring all of this stuff up, even though we've done it already, it's because these things, these rules still apply for series and parallel circuits. They apply for the whole circuit. Um, so for the whole circuit we have the total resistance, which we call R equivalent, um, which makes sense as we get into parallel circuits, why they call it equivalent. Um, and we have the total voltage, and we have the total current. And then as you have individual things in the circuit, if you have, say, like three different bulbs or three different motors or whatever you want to call it, um, then those things would have individual values like R1, R2, R3, etc., or V1, V2, V3, yada, yada. But point being is that R equals V over I works for the whole circuit, like that relationship for the whole circuit is true, and that relationship is also true for each individual thing in the circuit. Okay, so enough Ohm's Law. Um, let's get into series. circuits. I am not joking around. This is a series circuit because it's series. Serious. Okay, never, never mind. Uh, series circuits. There we go. Now, the thing that really distinguishes the series circuit is that there is one path for the current to flow through. So if I had a battery, and here's the symbol for a battery, the symbols are on page four of the reference table, there's a battery where the long line is the positive terminal and the short line is the negative terminal. There's our wires coming out. Make sure that they actually touch right there, that they touch the battery. So yeah, that they actually touch the battery there. Um, and so here comes the wires coming out from here. Now, I want to show you the difference. When I say that there's one path, suppose that I have like a couple of bulbs here. I have bulb one, and I have bulb two, and then I have bulb three. Then notice that there is one path for the current to flow through. There are no branches. What do I mean by a branch? So if I had instead 
if I had an, a wire kind of going like this with another bulb over here, then this thing right here, that's called a junction there and there. And these guys, this bulb right here and this bulb right here, they are parallel to each other, parallel lines. So that's called a parallel circuit. But the point is in a series circuit, there's one path. Here, there are two possible paths. I could go this way, or I could go this way. That's more than one path. In a series circuit, you only have one path. So, boop-a-doop-doop, boop-a-doop-boop-boop, boop-boop-boop-boop. There we go, we're back to our series circuit. Only one path for the current to flow through. Now, what that means is that if there's a break in the circuit, so if you had, say, a switch, and you opened that switch, where it was open, and then this was open, and you have an open switch there, then the current just stops. Now, what's important here, it's not like the current flows from here, like do 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 and then it's like, oh no, and then it just kind of stops, and there's current there, and there's no current afterwards. There's literally no current anywhere. So if that switch opens up, then all of the current just stops completely. Okay, let's get rid of our switch. Reconnect the wires, and there's my current flow. Now, um, that this is also true if one of the bulbs blows out, um, which happens to bulbs, and uh, if the bulb blows out, goodbye, then that also counts as a break in the circuit, and then all of the, uh, the current then stops as well. I wish I could just erase the yellow, but I can't. I'll just redraw my circuit. And um, yeah, so if there's a break in the circuit, like right here, then the current just stops. Um, I think you got my point. Even though I don't want to talk too much about parallel circuits, um, I will say that if, if there were a parallel circuit and there's a break in one branch, but not the other branch, the other branch is unaffected. They're independent of each other. But we'll get back to that when we talk about parallel circuits. Break anywhere in the loop. Current, which of course is I, stops. Before we move on, let me fix my bulbs so that they look like bulbs. Okay. So I mentioned before that the Ohm's law relationships still apply. R equals V over I for the whole circuit and individual things. But there are special rules for series circuits. We might as well start with the voltage. Um, I like to go in order V, I, R. So um, for voltage, the total voltage which is uh, the source voltage that could be power supply or a battery or the sum of the batteries or whatever that is equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 so in other words if i have a battery and i have a bunch of bulbs or resistors i'll use the zigzag symbol for resistor, because that is the symbol for resistor, um, and I have different resistors, and this is the total voltage over here from the battery, then uh, that would be like a voltage gain providing the voltage. The voltage drops the things that are using the voltage, V1, V2, V3. The sum of those drops, the things that are using that energy, that voltage, the energy per unit charge, the sum of those guys is going to be equal to what's coming out of the battery. So if that was, say, like a 9-volt battery, then V1, V2, and V3 would have to add up to 9. If they were all of the same, they'd be 3, 3, and 3. If they weren't the same, then they would just have to add up to 9. 
Now, if we're talking devices like computers or something, this is just totally bonkers. It doesn't work at all um, because the computers would not receive enough voltage. As you connected more things in series, then each thing would get less and less of the available energy and, uh, and computers wouldn't boot up. If it was a bulb, the bulb would be dimmer. Um, that might not be a big deal, uh, but this is also why holiday lights tend not to be super bright. Um, they tend to be kind of dim, just enough to give like a mood lighting situation, because if they're in a series chain, they're all sharing the available voltage. And the rule for things using the voltage, using the energy, adding up to the total, um, that's one thing. But also, you could have V total be V1 plus V2 plus V3 being the things providing the voltage. So that could be a series of batteries. Uh, you can connect batteries in series, and the battery voltages would just add up. Um, so you could take 9 volt batteries and you can connect them in series and then you would go 9, 18, 27, 36, etc. You can bump up the voltage um, and uh, there are definite advantages to that. Now the next rule in series circuits, it has to do with the current. And we have the total current is equal to I1 equals I2 equals I3, etc. Um, the voltage rule, by the way, is also etc. If you had four things or five things, you know, V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4 plus V5, etc. Uh, however many things you have, they all add up to the total. Well, in current, um, all, all of the currents are the same. And the reason why that's true is that if I have a certain amount of current here, then that's going to be the same current here and here and here and here and here. And that's the total current in a circuit, and it's the same at all points. And that's actually because of the law of conservation of charge. Things like resistors, light bulbs, or whatever, they use electrical energy. So if the energy is being provided by the battery, then the things in the circuit use that energy. That's why they call them voltage drops, because after each thing, the voltage drops, because it's using the energy from the battery. Um, charge and current is not used up. The charge just flows through, but the charges don't get eaten or anything like that. However uh, much current there is at this point right here, it's not like there's less here and less here. It's the same current all the way through everywhere um, in that circuit. So the advantage is that if you know the currents at one point, you know the current everywhere in that loop. Finally, the last rule for series circuits has to do with resistance. Now, instead of saying RT for total, we say REQ for equivalent, which um, doesn't really make sense for series circuits, but when we talk about parallel, I'll talk about why they use equivalent instead of total. But anyway, um, so we have three resistors here, R1, R2, and R3. There's only one loop, so as I add more resistors into the loop, the total resistance is bound to increase, and it does. So we have R1 plus R2 plus R3, etc. So those are the rules for series circuits for uh, voltage, current, and resistance. Now, one other comment about series circuits, and then I wanted to talk a little bit about strategy for solving problems involving series circuits. But first of all, there are two different kinds of meters that we use uh, to measure things in a circuit. Uh, there's an ammeter and there's a voltmeter. There's also something called an ohmmeter that measures resistance, but um, that doesn't really come up that often because if you can measure current and voltage, then you can calculate the resistance. Um, but ammeters, they measure current. And um, ammeter is kind of like amp meter. And amp is ampere. Right, And so the ammeters are going to measure current, and the unit for current is the ampere. Now, the way ammeters look in a circuit, if I have, say, a resistor 
the ammeter is going to be right next to that resistor and we put A for amperes or A for ammeter. Um, now, ammeters are always in series right next to holding hands with whatever they're measuring the current through. It could be after um, the, re the, the resistor, kind of like in this case, or it could be before. It doesn't matter. I said next to, not before or after. Um, but it does definitely need to be in series, which makes sense because in series... In series, our same at all points. Notice I said they're the same at all points. I didn't say remains the same. You have to be careful with your language because um, if it remains the same, that means I could adjust the resistance and nothing would happen to the current. And we know that's not true. That if resistance goes up, then the current goes down. But it would be the same lower value everywhere in that loop. So it's the same at all points. It doesn't necessarily remain the same as you adjust the circuit. Um, so just to be clear. But since the current is the same in a series circuit at all points, then the current that is in my resistor right here is going to be the same current that's in my ammeter. And so my ammeter will tell me what the current is in this resistor um, because it has the same value as the resistor. Now, uh, keeping in mind what I just said about resistance and current, ammeters have very low resistance. And they have very low resistance so that they don't affect the thing they're trying to measure. Ammeters are trying to measure current. Changing the resistance changes the current, which is what they're trying to measure. So with, with ammeters, they have very, very low resistance so that when, I, when you slip them into the circuit, the total resistance is not really affected. So the current, which they're trying to measure, is not really affected. If ammeters had a high resistance, you'd put them in there. It's kind of like stepping on the hose. Ammeter comes in to measure the current. It's like, I'm here to measure the current. And it like, you know, sits on the hose like, I have a big resistance. And all of a sudden, the current goes down. And just by being there, it affects what it's trying to measure. Bad idea. So ammeters have a very low resistance. Low resistance in that ammeter. Um, yeah. So yeah, just to write that down, ammeters wire them in series. Just to give you a sense of what an actual series circuit schematic or drawing would look like, if I had a battery, could be a car battery, could be a 120 volt outlet, like in your wall, but there's my battery. And suppose I had some cheap holiday lights and were a strand of a bunch of bulbs. Bulb one, bulb two, bulb three, bulb four, bulb five. That would be a good example of a series circuit. And then if I wanted to measure the current, remember that I can put that ammeter anywhere that I want in the circuit. Um, frequently, if you want total current, in a series circuit, you can put that ammeter anywhere. I would put it right next to the power supply. Because if you have a series circuit or a parallel circuit, that's always going to give you the total current. Um, so I write I for current total, um, and that would be my ammeter measuring the current. Now for voltage, suppose I wanted to measure the voltage of one of these bulbs. I would not put a voltmeter in series. I would not do this. I wouldn't be like, hey, voltmeters must go in series too, right? Wrong. Doop, boop, boop. The voltmeter is going to 
give the bulb a hug. One arm on one side, one arm on the other. That kind of connection is called a parallel connection, but we're going to get back to that later. Stay tuned. So, thank you, Voltmeter. See you next time. Okay, we're almost done. I know it just broke 20 minutes, so bear with me here. Um, but in terms of a strategy for solving problems, solving circuit problems, solving circuit problems, that looks like a six, not a G, G. The very first thing you do, first thing, what type of circuit is it? Right now, I haven't told you much about parallel circuits, so it's if you see a circuit problem right now, you're going to be like, well, it's series because Hessel hasn't told us about parallel yet, and you'd be right. But later, you can come across either one, and so the very first thing, so you don't mess up which rules you're applying, you got to identify what kind of circuit you have. So yeah, we're going to be dealing with series circuits, but let's just say they gave you a problem, so if I had a problem where I know that the total voltage, let's just say that V total is 120 volts, why not? And I had um, three resistors hooked into the circuit. And uh, maybe I knew that the first resistor was 30 ohms. And the second resistor is maybe 60 ohms. And then I know that the voltage across the first resistor that's going to be 36 volts. And say the problem asked you what is the value of the third resistor. Now with three different rules for series circuits, voltage adds up, current is the same at all points, and the resistance adds up, and then of course there's still Ohm's law, R equals V over I. For the whole circuit and for each individual thing, one, two, and three, V equals IR and I equals V over R. There's a lot of information here and a lot of formulas. I recommend that you make a table of values. You don't always have to make the table of values, but if you're wondering how to do a problem or getting lost or confused, organizing your information with a table is a good idea. Let's make a table. All right, so in our table, we have rows for each individual thing in the circuit, number one, two, three. And then we also have the total values. And we have voltage for columns, voltage, current, Resistance, one, two, three, total voltage, current, resistance. Okay, so we said that the total voltage was 36 volts, that was given. Uh, I lied, that's 120 volts, that's given, sorry about that. 36 volts was the first guy, 36 volts. We knew that the first resistor was 30 ohms and the second resistor was 60 ohms. And what they wanted to know, what is the value of the third resistor? Well, if you know one current, you know them all. Um, so if I can get a current value, I know every current in the circuit. 
but I don't have any current values currently. See what I did there? Um, so what I can do is I can use the information in the first resistor to get the current. I can do I equals V over R for the first resistor, 36 volts over 30 ohms, and that's 1.2 amps worth of current. Now, it's a series circuit, so if I know one, I know them all. Oh yeah. Now you might be thinking, it's like, oh, look at that. Now we have the third current. Now we can get the resistance and we just need to get the third voltage and we don't have it. Now that is, you have two different choices here, really. You can find out the second voltage, find out the third voltage, then find out the resistance. Another thing you can do is find out the total resistance um, using Ohm's law and then use the fact that the resistances add up to get the third guy. The first approach I mentioned takes three steps. The second approach takes two. I'm lazy, I wanna do two steps. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So if I'm going after the total resistance, uh, actually no I'm not, if I'm going after R3, I can, I'll can. i need the total resistance and I can get it. I can do R equals V over I for the whole circuit. Hundred and twenty volts, one point two amps, nice and tidy, one hundred ohms for the whole circuit. Then I remember that current adds up in series. So one hundred ohms is 30 ohms plus 60 ohms plus what? R3 is ta -da, 10 ohms. Now the nice thing about this too is that you can double check your work. We know that as R equals V over I, V equals IR. I can do that for the individual circuits for two and for three. So 1.2 times 60, that's 72 volts. And 1.2 times 10 is 12 volts. And it's like, well, you know, that's nice. You filled out your table, but what does it really get you? It does actually get you somewhere because we know that voltage adds up in series and 36, 72, and 12, I'll let you figure out what that adds up to. Did, did, did you get it yet? Did you add it up? Should come as no shock that it's 120 volts because that's the total voltage. Voltage adds up in series, so you can double check your work. Okay, so that should wrap it up for a series circuits. Again, Ohm's law still applies. Um, and uh, a series circuit has one loop with no breaks, so if there's a break in the circuit, then the current drops out. The voltages add up. All the current is the same at all points. Um, doesn't remain the same as you adjust the resistance, the current will change. Resistance goes up, current goes down. Ammeters are wired in series, uh, right next to, before or after, but right next to, whatever they're measuring the current through and they have very low resistance. Um, when you're solving a circuit problem, make sure you identify the type of circuit, series or parallel, and make a table of values if it helps you out. Um, so stay tuned next time, we'll talk about parallel circuits, and uh, I have 30 seconds left in this video until they literally shut it down because that's the maximum time that I have for making education videos. Um, I can sing you a song for the next 20 seconds, but I won't. Sorry. Have a good day.